Hello. We're live. Um, I was just hanging out on the Mike Creighton's uh, live cast, um, live stream. Uh, he just did some, shared some excellent uh, sh structural nose and eye tips to do with the Loomis method. So I was just over there and jumped over here. So maybe a few more people will come over from Mike's live stream. Um, Athena and CCK, Cindy are here. Thank you for, for joining. Beata, hi. Um, hey, Sketchy. N nice to have you all here. Um, and some greetings from, from hot Göttingen as well. It's been very warm. We spent the day trying to evade the heat. Um, Karen, Porcupine Pancake, Katie, hello. It's, it's great to have you here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in the middle of moving. So yesterday I moved out of my place. As we've got a different background here. We're kind of, um, the next two weeks are going to be a bit nomadic for us as a family. Um, we stayed at a friend's place last night. We're going to be here and just kind of moving around. So I may be live streaming and doing my live drawing sessions from a few different locations in the coming weeks. But September, we should be set in our new space. So that'll be cool. Hey, Henry, Tim, Robert, Annette, Clover, Lisanne, Painting Trends. It's it's wonderful to have you all here. Um, Hilda, hi. From from all over the place. Um, a few from Berlin, Quebec. We've got some Canada represented. Plenty of places from the States. Tennessee, Florida, um, North Carolina. Uh, Annette from Denmark, cool. I, I'm in close to Göttingen in central Germany and it's um, warm and it's super nice to, to be here with all of you online. Um, yeah, impressed that I'm doing these live things while moving. I, it's just fun. It's fun hanging out and drawing together. So it's nice amongst the everything being adrift and kind of... Um, chaotic to some extent. It's, it's nice to just hang out and draw together. So, um, our Brenda asked how my foot is. My foot is better. Um, last week I had just injured my toe and it was pretty painful and it's healing and I've been able to walk. We've been able to, um, move things and, uh, I've been able to even chase my kids. So the toe is definitely healing. Thank you for asking. Um, Cool. Clive's here from Wales. Excellent. Um, Brooklyn, Texas, California. So cool. Today, we're going to be drawing someone called Spilly. He's there. And this reference photo was actually shared by Jess uh, Rochella, I think, is the um, a sketchy user who... Um, has done a lot of awesome work and I just, um, <laughs> it's good that I can chase my kids. It is, it's very convenient. They need a lot of chasing. So Spilly is Jess's partner and they've been together for 10 years. Um, Jess may be, and maybe Spilly will be tuning in at some time uh, today as we're drawing them. Or maybe you're already here, if you are, say hi. And um, yeah, Jess had really lovely things to share about their love and time together and um, I'm going to be doing a special thing the next uh, today and next week. Um, Spilly and Jess both have um, identically lit portraits and they're both really nice cool photos to work from so I'm going this week we'll do Spilly and next week we'll do Jess and they'll be together on one page so if you're going to tune in next week as well and draw along then maybe shift over your portrait so you'll be able to fit two faces on one page and I think it's going to be nice to put them together um, in our our portrait it'll be a, a couple portrait and yeah I've been chatting with Jess and she shared a lot of stories uh, so that they they met a decade ago and they were both selling hula hoops um, at farmers markets in Baltimore City and they met and fell in love and um, started uh, Baltimore Hoop Love. So for anyone who's into hoops anywhere around Baltimore, then check that out. Hooping is very cool. 
um, a street circus and entertainment operation that brings hula hoops and still walking and other circus acts to farmers markets and events locally. Very cool. Um, and they also have a urban f farm home thing and doing cool stuff with like, I think permaculture and hoops and it's, it's just so awesome. So it's been really cool to connect and, and hear about some of that. Ah, Victoria's here. Awesome. Nice to have you here. Um, yeah. And I, I, I spent a lot of years playing with poi. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with that, basically fire on chains. And when I was traveling around a lot, I would be, it's, it was like 10 years ago now, um, I used to play with poi a lot and um, hooping, I have a hoop and they're just so cool. So many cool things you can do with hoops. I don't play much, so much with fire these days, um, but it's still something I, I love and enjoy and respect. So it's cool to have a couple of hoopers to draw. Um, I'm gonna switch over to my workspace here and um, I'm going to show you something because I am going to do this um, coupled composition. So I've taken both of their photos and I often use Procreate to um, to put pictures together. So if anyone saw my 30 Faces 30 Days work that I was doing, um, if I was a few days behind I could get a bunch of faces and put them all together and then I would kind of have a composition to work from. And this is cool because they, they have the same lighting and they love each other. So it's going to be so cool to draw them together. <laughs> and I'll just get over the link to the photo will be below the live stream or the video if you're watching afterwards. And here's Billy. Am I going to draw him? He's got some cool glasses with cool lighting and cool beard. I haven't drawn a beard since last week. So it's good to do another beard. And this is going to be fun. I have, um, for those interested in the materials, I have some Hanamula Anniversary Watercolor Paper here. Um, it's a heavyweight paper, which apparently is hard to get hold of. So I'm afraid of mine running out. Um, I We're moving. I had to throw out the freezer and we had some blackberries. We couldn't eat all of them. So I have some blackberry ink, also known as blackberry juice here. And it has like some little kind of chunks of blackberry in it. And, and I also have my acorn ink, which is my really nice dark ink. Um, it's like a super dark sepia brown color, which is nice. And I have some elder pens. This one has a, a split in it, so I can get some interesting marks from that. It was an accident. Um, my first ever live stream, I made this pen on camera and then I split it and broke it. I was like, oh no. But um, but now it's just a, a pen that has this cool kind of can do some cool mark making with it. So I'll get to drawing. I'm, I've shifted over my paper, so I'll draw Spilly on this side. So the next week, I'll side um, free for Jess. So that will be fun. Um, how many people have just jumped over here from Mike's live stream? So cool that he's uh, teaching such. Um, sturdy foundational stuff to to expand out from. It's uh, very nice. I've got, got a bit of a weird shadow from this here. I hope I don't knock it over. I've got some paper towel on hand. It's always good for cleaning up messes or getting rid of excess ink that you don't really, doesn't end up in the place where you want it. It's sometimes good to have some paper towel. Um, so, I've got the whole paper fits on frame here so I can I'll work from top to bottom and start drawing. So it's nice, uh, nice chatting and now I'll just take a breath, calm down, maybe drink. We've been, yeah, it's hot, we've been out with the kids all day. Now it's time to focus and draw together with you. So if you're drawing along, um, let everyone know, uh, let us know what you're working with as well. Super interesting to know what people are um, experimenting with or what tools of choice you may have. Um, well, I've got the leg of the tripod in an awkward kind of place here, but that's all right. Sometimes it's good to work in an uncomfortable way. Might get some interesting results. So I'm gonna use this split um, pen. I dipped my 
uh, stick pens in water. They were soaking up a bit of water before I started drawing with them. And that prevents them from kind of soaking up too much ink. Um, because then they're kind of loaded with water before you put them into the ink. And maybe, maybe it will flow a bit better as well, depending on what you're using. Um, the art has got twig and watercolour combination. Excellent. How many people are drawing with twigs? Um, I just love these twig ones. Look at the shape of this. It's just lovely. Before I even start drawing anything with it, it's just a cool uh, twig turned pen. Um, elderberry ink that you made yesterday. That's so cool. Hilda posted on Instagram that she had just drawn something with elderberry ink and as I saw that she posted that I had just been looking at elderberries thinking I'm going to be able to make some elderberry ink. So it's so cool Hilda that you're you're working with that already. Um, I'll uh, If I see questions pop up and stuff I'll address them or maybe kind of scan through later but now I'll I'll get to drawing and talk a bit about what I'm, maybe what I'm thinking as I'm drawing. So I just picked the hairline as kind of a, a place to start. It's a really you know, strong contrast and a nice border for the entire face. Um, and just some lovely, amazing, scruffy hair all around this face, which is super cool. Uh, so that's going to be fun to draw. And that's just provided this kind of top, top edge here some glasses and I, I totally love the reflection in these glasses. It's uh, awesome. And as anyone who's watched me draw glasses in the past know I really like drawing glasses. Just that that contrast of the, the, the human-made form, these hard edges against the soft kind of uh, flowing forms of the face. Um, it's such a nice contrast. I'm using this this pen, but I haven't even tried out any of this kind of interesting shapes. This looks like it'd be cool with that split in the pen. That's going to be really cool for drawing hair. So it's perfect. And as Beata just said, the hair is going to be fun. And yes, it is. And this split pen is going to be a fun tool to draw it with. Um, yeah, glasses are fun. Hair is fun. So much fun stuff to draw. Um, all right, I'm already catching myself kind of making mistakes. Uh, there's this edge here where the um, the kind of this form of the hair is stepping out and then it po it's kind of pointing to where the inside edge of the glasses is. I was just drawing along over here, just about to doom myself to two small glasses. Um, and lucky I just caught that before I got carried away with it that this line is kind of reaching out and as it curves down it's kind of indicating where the inside edge of the frames is and I was going to put it here it would have been way off so I'm glad I managed to catch that um, it's good good to spot uh, things that you don't want to happen as they're happening um, oh, I just got a weird message come up here uh, ask me if I want to end this broadcast and I don't. Um, can someone tell me that this is still <laughs> happening and I haven't just been kicked out? Someone write in the chat that I'm still here and then I'll just leave it and keep drawing and hope that nothing changes. Strange. The chat's quiet. I don't know how much of a delay it is, but I hope you're there. I hope you can. You're still with me. Um, connect to the net on my iPad again. The ECAM is trying to update itself. I don't want it to do that. <laughs> it's still going. Thank you. Thank you, Tori. <laughs> this is like, what's going on? I don't want this to happen. I just want to draw. Um, thank you, everyone, for still being here. 
thank you, computer, for not doing an automatic update. That would have been an inopportune time to update. Um, yeah, so this, as you can see, this uh, blackberry ink that I'm working with. Um, I think, no, blueberries. Uh, blueberry ink is uh, lovely. It's basically just blueberry juice. Um, and I, it's awesome. You can get, don't use fresh blueberries. Uh, get frozen blueberries, and as they thaw, this, the cell walls of the berries explode. Um, they just bust, and then all of this juicy, inky uh, blueberry juice leaks out, and you can you can draw with it. So it's a uh, super cool kitchen ink. Anything you can make out of edible stuff, I like to refer to as kitchen inks, and there's so much stuff that we can use from the kitchen and from the garden. Um, so Jess, are you here Jess? You said you were going to tune in. With, um, it'd be cool, maybe you can even grow some stuff in your urban farm garden that you can then make ink with, with people. And it's yeah, so much fun, especially using these ed edible things. I love doing it with the kids. Um, I know that it's, it's all really safe when they start licking <laughs> licking their paintbrushes or whatever kids sometimes strangely do that's all right and it's good to give them safe things to experiment and explore with just put some scratching hair stuff in over here it's kind of a loose shape um porcupine pancake ass I'll pop this up here. If I hadn't have caught my mistake, would I have started again or continued? I would have just kept going and I would have been like, oh, that's a bit too small, but I would have kept going. And that's, I think, a super cool thing with ink. You know, it forces you to really focus on what you're doing. Um, and maybe I, maybe like chatting with you all <laughs> adds to uh, me kind of messing up on things sometimes, but that's okay. Because I think it's just really good to notice these things and be like, oh, okay, what can I do now? How am I going to be able to compensate from that? One thing would have been to shrink in the rest of like the hairline. Um, and I think it's kind of a bit small in relation to the glasses anyway. But I think it's still going to be a fun drawing. Um, and that's often the case that oh, there's something on his, the frame of his glasses here. I don't know if it's a ring or some tape or something. That's interesting. Um, yeah, like catching mistakes and seeing how can you work with it. Or maybe it's later that you notice. It's like, oh, what can I do to like kind of compensate with that? Because um, you can't really erase it. So it's really interesting. Um, and often I find I have things that happen with the eyes. Uh, sometimes maybe they're a bit small or they're a bit big. Um, or if I do the glasses the wrong size. It's, it's interesting to notice that that's kind of a spot where I catch myself often. Um, and then it's good to kind of take note of that. And as I work on those things in future, to be like, I don't want to do that wrong again. And just really pay, take care and pay special attention to that. So there's this cool highlight in here. Um, I don't know how, how much I'm going to like tone the rest of the face. It'd be cool if that highlight was really bright, but um, I'll just kind of draw it in. And that's something about like finding where you are in the drawing. Something I love about glasses is that they can really help um, give the, the guidance uh, and orientation that we need. It can be very helpful. Have glasses and looking here, okay, the eye is like above the top half. It's like pretty high in the frame and use that to to really inform where the mark making for the glasses is going to be. Michael Gregory, cool as, lots of love and fire, that's nice. Glad you like the colour. Um, Lizanne was writing, if I wrote a book 
on experimental inks? No, I haven't. Um, I have some cool ideas of things I would like to do with ink, which may be book-worthy in the future. Um, there are wonderful books. I would really recommend anyone in ink making gets a book called Make Ink. It totally, like, blew my mind because I had already been making some natural inks, but I was pretty much like working exclusively in uh, sepia tones, like various browns for for a couple years. And then when someone told me about the book Make Ink, which has a range of incredible um, natural colors, uh, that that totally it changed the way I experience the world. I would go outside and be like, maybe I can make it with this, maybe with this, maybe with this. So it's an awesome, inspiring book if you're interested in ink making. Um, if you're interested in ink making, you could sign up to my Ink Naturally class too. And I share a few things in there. But this book, Make Ink, is so inspirational. Um, just the spirit of um, curiosity that it fosters, I think, is a beautiful... Um, it's just, just such a nice way to exist in the world. Uh, and that book is just so so nice, such a gift to, to read something that makes you really move through the world in a, in a new way. Um, by Jason Logan, Make Ink, it's so cool. But maybe one day I'll, um, I'll have a, a book too. Um, but Make Ink for me... Uh, I see a lot of people, there's so many people on Instagram doing all this incredible ink making stuff and that's so cool. And for me it was, it was really, it was about having a safe zero waste way to make art supplies. Um, so it's, it's really, it's about, it's, it's really helped me connect to my surroundings and understand the plant, plants that are around that I can use to make ink with. Um, and, but yeah, initially it was like, okay, what, what materials can I use that are not going to make me, my family and the world I live in sick? Um, so it was mostly about having something to, to do portraits with. Um, so if and when I have an ink making book, it will, um, it would definitely be portrait focused. So it'd be interesting to, I have some ideas. Um, how I can kind of put a collection together that will do something like that. And something I love about it, um, yeah, I'll just share my ideas with you because I think it's pretty exciting and something I'd love to do. Um, is it all right if I just talk about my ideas and I'm not really explaining my drawing process very much? Anyone here who wants me to talk more about what I'm thinking when I'm drawing? Otherwise, I'll just ramble on about ink making and things that I like. <laughs> I'll just... Take a moment to breathe and wait for your answers. The glasses, have, I think they've like shrunk the eyes a bit. It's, and it just, yeah, glasses create such cool, fun distortions. It's, fun stuff to draw. <laughs> keep talking. Okay. I guess you just keep talking and talking and talking. So I've, um, I think actually, before I even started working with my own inks, I had this idea years and years and years ago that I thought, <laughs> you like my rambling porcupine pancake, that's nice. Ramble on, okay. Um, yeah, it was years ago when I was just like, flying over the world on Google Earth, Google Maps, just looking at landscapes. Um, particularly in Australia, there's such incredible landscapes. I, I come from Australia, but live in Germany. I've been here for many years now. Um, but just looking at the Earth from above, it's just incredible. And there are vast areas of the world and the land that we live on and share together which just looks so incredible and beautiful and in itself is just a, a work of art. It's so incredible. And, and I thought it would be wonderful to paint portraits and have this kind of 
abstract but totally real kind of aerial view stuff in the background. Um, I thought that would just be because I love portraits and I'm often like, what should I put in the background? I don't know. Um, and to make it about the place where the person is from, to fill the background with something that is of relevance to them and their story. Um, and then Idea O came up with, uh, well, once I started working uh, with natural inks and making my own inks, um, I thought it would be so cool to collect colours from the place where that person lives to draw them with their colours from their place and to have their land and country be part of it because in, in the materials and also in that kind of visual representation and I just think it's this kind of multi-layered story of them that the, the artwork becomes the portrait and that's something I'm really excited about. I get goosebumps talking about it to you. Um, that's something I'd love to do. So maybe if and when I have a book about natural inks, it will be focused on that kind of um, portraits and, and storytelling. Because, um, yeah, that's what I love about portraits. You know, it's, um, you connect to your muse, even if you don't know them. And, like, I, I've totally had these feelings of, of love for someone I'm drawing, even if we've never met. And just that feeling of connection and focus that you have um, sometimes as you work. And so there's that level of connection to your muse and the work, the connection to yourself when you're in this creative, intuitive process, which I think is such a, um, a beautiful part of what we do as we, we draw and connect to our intuition. And the connection to the land and the place that I live in and the, the materials that I use that I, I know intimately and often know the plants and places where where my colours come from that I work with. Um, and just like all those levels of kind of connection and awareness, um, I think is just such a rewarding way to, to make art. And it's something that I love sharing and that's why I do this with, with all of you and the, the Ink Naturally course. I just think it's such a, for me it's been so wonderful and it's um, something I am happy to share. And thank you very much Sketchy for, for giving me a platform to share with and and yeah especially at this time it's it's been it's been pretty pretty mad this year. Um, but it's been such a blessing to be able to connect online from afar and um, and to create with so many people. Ah oh, Tori um, yeah. Everyone can read this, but I'll read it too. We had an exhibition of Aboriginal Australian memorial poles at our school's museum that used materials from the land the person was from in that way. It was really beautiful. I, I think Aboriginal art is just um, it's amazing. Um, in my final semester of university, we did um, Ab uh, Indigenous design perspectives, which was maybe the best thing I did at university. Um, I studied architecture and um, it was really wonderful, um, Aboriginal art uh, and Aboriginal culture and knowledge is um, just so wonderful and precious. Um, yeah, so making art that connects, you know, it's connecting us and Ideally, in some situation, it gets presented in a way that gives other people a chance to connect um, and to hopefully experience something, um, whatever that may be. And once we've created something, we put it out there and it has its own life. And if some of that comes through, all those layers of, of place and story and connection, if some of that can kind of, without me having to talk about it, can then be expressed and passed on, then that would be a, that would be wonderful. All right. I think as I was rambling, I kind of drew most of the face. Um, a sticky art channel, this is interesting, yeah. Aboriginal art is so original. 
Um, and there was something as I was studying it in indigenous design perspectives. Um, there's this really incredible Aboriginal art. And I used to think, and it was kind of for a while, there was a phase where a lot of Aboriginal artists um, had a lot of international um, uh, notoriety. And there was, it's like, it was like the, the new art in the world. And it was kind of like abstract art and so many beautiful colors. But it's amazing because it's just not abstract. And it's each, it's all t telling stories. And, and some of it is really, it's directly related to the land and the country that, that people come from and the stories that they've passed on. And, and it's amazing what's conveyed wordlessly through, through this art. Um, and coming, yeah, that there was this phase where it was like the new, like the newest thing in art was Aboriginal art. And it was, it's funny because it's not new. It's like the, the oldest culture in the world, um, perhaps. Um, and yeah, just uh, incredible. So if, if, if you're not familiar with um, much Aboriginal art, then I would encourage you to dive into it. And there's some really um, wonderful work and storytelling and um, it's just beautiful and important. Um, yeah, so now with most of these kind of facial features kind of drawn, um, I don't know the Kudugu Hua Museum, Tori, but um, write to me about it, I'll check it out. Um, or write something in here. Uh, so yeah, I've got like all these kind of facial features and here with my cool split pen, I'm just gonna do some scribbly stuff and I think it's gonna make it look like hair because the, the wood split as I made this pen. So um, I think this is like the, the perfect pen for drawing this scruffy hairy bib. Um, just check out some of these comments. It's, uh, I love it when you comment, when you hit the thumbs up button, that's nice too. Um, it's, it's just cool to be in a conversation with you all. The, the, the live stream format is interesting because every Tuesday I do like a live drawing session and we're actually live on Zoom. So come and draw with me because it's a lot of fun. And it's so nice to just chat with people um, when I reading the conversation is um, it's just a, a bit disjointed, but it's still wonderful to be able to be with you in this way. Yeah, some really interesting stuff being said in the chat here. So nice. So look at this. This is one line here. Oh. I just love these kind of things. This is like calligraphy. This could be some kind of, it could be a D, it could be an S. Um, and that's a cool thing about making our own tools, apart from knowing exactly where the, the branch came from and the tree. And I, I know that it was just out there, out this window where I found this branch. Um, we can experiment with making different tools and really, yeah, have a new understanding of your mark making and, the kind of things you can explore and discover, the limitations sometimes. Uh, it's really, really interesting to uh, experiment with these things. And maybe you'll find with a split pen that you end up making lines, which you never would have thought of making before. So really th interesting things can happen. Oh, this is a fun beard. Um, this, yeah. So there's, there's now on YouTube, there's an Ink Naturally channel on the Sketchy channel or a playlist um, where you can see, I think it's like 30 videos or something. Um, and there's a pretty tall, there's a pen making video in there. So if you're curious, interested in making pens, also in the, the Ink Naturally class, there's um, a pen making video. Um, and it's uh, 
it's, I just love it. I love that this, this amazing colour just came from blueberries, even though it's not blue, uh, which could be altered with the right kind of modifiers, I guess. Um, yeah, this colour just came from berries. This awesome calligraphy pen just came from a dead branch of a tree. Okay, bye bye Cindy, nice that you were here. Um, are my children venturing into art? Um, I, I encourage my children to do whatever they want to do, even if I'm not really into it. Um, my, my oldest, he's nearly seven, I can, he, he's really into cars and machines and being loud and fast and um, those are not really things I'm very into. But whenever he he's kind of, um, you know, I think it's important for me not to diss what he likes, whatever it is, because he's his own person and he needs to find things out. And we used to draw a lot together. Um, and then there's a phase, I think at kindergarten, people were saying that he just scribbles and he stopped drawing for a while. But that, that phase has passed. Um, but something really interesting I noticed once was I was like, okay, if you don't want to draw, Let's go to the art supplies shop together and you can get whatever you want. And turned out he was more interested in kind of three-dimensional things and glittery things. Um, so he would just like chop up stuff and glue it together and put glitter on it and kind of more sculptural and expressive in a, a different way. Um, and yeah, the little ones, they just kind of because they're often pencils and pens and stuff around. They often grab something and just start doing things. So the oldest one is almost seven. The others are almost two and four and a half. But I will continue to support them in whatever they want to do. But we do a lot of like this ink making stuff. We do that together. And it's totally cool because um, sometimes they'll... Like I can will come home with a pocket full of stuff that he's collected somewhere and he's like, maybe you can make ink with this. Or he'll come with a, a stick that he's whittled. Um, I think I have one here. Yeah, this, this is a, a pen that I can made for me. And he just came one day and he's like, here you go, Dad, here's a pen. And they, yeah, they really, I think the process of making your own art supplies is something that they love as well. And um, I've taught workshops where people come and they say, oh, I, I don't even draw, but I'm really interested in just making color. Um, and so yeah, sometimes just the making is so much fun. And then the freedom then to fill pages and pages with this uh, plant, plant paint that we've made. Um, is really nice and as I mentioned earlier knowing that it's like totally non-toxic in some cases even edible um, it's so such a nice way to do creative stuff with them um, here I'm just looking at whereabouts is this kind of shoulder line and I've got the chin about here and on this side the shirt is kind of over here and maybe it should be all beard and no shirt but if I were to get into the shirt I can just kind of indicate it it's like over here and then it's a bit lower on the other side, lining up with the beard line and hair here, I'm just kind of dropping down a bit. But I'm not going to go over here because um, next week I'll be drawing Jess on the other side. Um, maybe with the same ink, maybe with a different one. Um, Sheila's using poppy ink, that's awesome. Love poppy petal ink. Yeah, that's lovely. Sticky art channel, that the more you connect with the land, 
the more your art is one with your surroundings. And I think it's so important to connect to the land and your surroundings because we're part of it. Um, and does the blueberry ink change colour when it dries? Yes, it does. And it's interesting. It can behave really differently in, in different conditions. And there are certain things you can do with natural inks to um, affect their light fastness and to change the colour. Um, in one of the Ink Naturally lessons, I, I put a lot of baking soda um, into the ink and over the course of like a month and it was it was totally unprotected it was it was out in the light um, so light and oxygen uh, just the air and the oxidization of things that can change the color of your inks um, and it's possible to put things behind UV glass or um, to seal it with a fixative but I don't like to use fixative light spray fixative so much anymore Someone told me recently that um, gum arabic will also help the light fast fastness because it's that and I, I use cherry sap instead of gum arabic because I can forage it um, but it creates like this film um, but it's not something I've done with enough time to really be able to report on that but in future I'll be able to share any findings I make with you um, so yeah, a lot of these natural inks will fade. Anything that has iron mixed in with it, um, or even copper. I don't use copper so much because it's, I think it's more harmful than iron. Um, but it has a magical blue colour. So for special occasions, if you want some copper blue, it's pretty, pretty special. Um, but anything that's got mixed in with metals that... Um, kind of helps the light fastness, but it makes it a lot darker, so it wouldn't be wouldn't be this color anymore. And the whole natural ink thing, making your own supplies, for me it's it's a lot less about getting the color exactly right than just exploring the color. And even the fading and changing is part of the art then, that um, it continues to have its own life. Um, so yeah, the, the way these different colors respond is, um, is totally varied. Earth pigments is something I want to get into more, and there's some really incredible stuff on Amst um, Amstagram, Instagram, um, of uh, Heidi Lynn, it's like a pigment archivist, um, I think that's her name. Maybe I'm getting it wrong. Um, Heidi Gustafsson, oh, it's totally awesome. I'll check me out on Instagram and I'll share uh, something in my stories of hers because she, she's just so inspiring. Collect, um, collecting earth pigments from all over the world and archiving it. And she has some really amazing things to say about ochre and earth. So yeah, earth colors um, are much more light fast than a lot of botanical colors. Um, Ah, uh, yeah, Hilda, this thing about falling in love with someone while you're drawing, it's, it's so special. Um, yeah, and, and it's that feeling of connection, you know? And I think it's interesting because it's like this person doesn't even know I'm drawing them maybe and I'm like feeling this love. Um, and I think it's a really interesting thing about love. <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't have to be felt by the... What, what, what is it then in that situation that I'm kind of... What is that feeling of love? Um, the, yeah, it's just special. Um, yeah, Kim, how do I dispose of natural inks? Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, that I was getting into it because I wanted safe things, safe, safe art supplies for my family and for my environment. Um, and things happen to natural inks sometimes if I don't take precautions and sometimes I don't I'm I, I'm not super disciplined in the way I make things I don't follow recipes and I improvise a lot and sometimes I'll just make something and maybe even forget to um, put cloves in cloves is like my anti-mold stuff because um, yeah natural inks get moldy they are natural organic um, decaying substances so they can get moldy 
um, and putting clothes in will prevent mold growth. Um, but sometimes you've got to throw things out. Or if you're moving house and you've got like 50 jars of ink and some of them you don't even know what kind of ink they are anymore. Um, so recently I disposed of inks and um, and basically it's just water and plant stuff. So um, like this blueberries or if it's come from nature like I taught a workshop and I used elderberry ink and I smushed the berries and had this ink, inky juice and at the end of the workshop, I um, tipped the tipped the juice into the ground and below the tree that it came from. So if you start putting, there are other things you can do with inks and making paints where you um, use some less, less safe and healthy ingredients. And um, like for making your own watercolors, uh, there's like aluminum salts and different metals and stuff you can put into it. And then I think it starts becoming more complicated again. It's something I'm very curious about, making my own um, like dry pigment, which could then be used as oil paint. But then I think it's it's not, not such a sim simple issue anymore how to dispose of it if it has uh, like questionable elements in it, like yeah, aluminum sole or um, or if it's got, I don't know, copper acetate or something in it, it's uh, it's no longer just the pure plant um, stuff. And, and that's that's what I like about this really kind of simple approach. Um, there are amazing things that you can do with all this other stuff, but it just kind of takes a, a step away from the the safe, natural process of just going out, finding something, and squishing it onto the paper or cooking it up and and using it to make ink. Um. Okay, Brenda, I, I, baking powder is a modifier, it's not a mordant. A mordant is something that helps like bind the color into the fibers, right? So in, it's in textiles, um, like in a cotton shirt, I think if you s soaked it in buttermilk or vinegar beforehand um, that the the vinegar and that acid I don't totally know but I know that a mordant is something that helps bind color to a fiber so if you and some of the inks that I make I put vinegar in it um, and the rust the iron mix that I use has vinegar in it when I make my acorn ink and tannin based inks and the vinegar um, I guess is a mordant and it's really helping it get into the fibers of the paper whether you're, you know, whatever it is you're using. A lot of paper is made of cotton so I guess it works the same as textile dyes really. Um, so baking powder is a modifier and not a mordant. <clears throat> um, and you can also, so I don't have any with me but you can do amazing magical things where you change the color of your natural inks and baking powder would now turn this into a green color um, but that green is fugitive, which means that after a time it will change and may become yellow and it's, I guess it's making the color more unstable. Um, and then if you shift it, so that's alkaline and if you make it more acidic with vinegar or lemon juice or rhubarb, uh, oxalic acid, um, then you shift it in a different direction and this would become more pink um, if it was more acidic. And that's a very fun thing of making natural inks to experiment with those things. Um, Suzanne, you can definitely check it out later. Um, so the, the recording of this will be available as soon as we're done, I think. Um, so you'll be able to go back and, and watch. And, uh, <laughs> cool, Jess is here. Spilly just walked through the room, looked at the screen. Hey, that's me. Um, awesome. It's, it's so nice to, to have you both in the room. And thank you. Jess, and thank you, Spilly, for your wonderful face. Thank you for your love and your awesomeness. So, um, yeah, this is like, this has been so much fun, just kind of drawn itself. I feel like um, sometimes in the hour of a live stream, I kind of um, wish I had more time. But this is really, um, this has been super fun. And I'm already feeling pretty good with it. So now it's like, okay. This is a, a good foundation. What else? Um, what else can we do together? 
how's everyone else going? Who is drawing along? Um, from everyone who's hanging out in the chat. Um, now Tori said the beard's looking nice. I like it too. Uh, it's fun, fun beard, fun pen. Thank you, Spilly, for your for your beard. Um, so maybe you could give some more attention to the eyes. Um, something when working with dark inks that I like uh, is like for mid tones and shading and stuff is to just do a really simple vertical hatching. Um, I think that's a fun way to kind of add some tonal variety with ink. And it's super kind of simple, simplified, stylized kind of graphic way to to experiment with tone and shadow and stuff. And yeah, I love that with this pen. This this whole thing has just been done with this one carved stick. And then when you turn it up on the side, then you've got a super sharp edge that you can do really fine hatching and stuff with and do fine details. Um, yeah, so cool. So as I mentioned earlier, this is Elder uh, from an elderberry tree or bush or whatever you want to call them. The Elder Wand. Elder is totally magical. Been great for a drawing with. Um, Inktober's coming up, and there's going to be a sketchy uh, Inktober 2020 portrait challenge in collaboration with the official Inktober crew. Um, there'll be an inking tutorial from Jake Parker. I'm going to be there. Um, doing natural ink portraits, um, Vin Ganapati and Artul, uh, also from the Sketchy crew, and it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be like 30 faces, 30 days, but it's going to be 31, because October has 31 days. And um, I'm excited to see what I and everyone else is going to create during Inktober this year. So it's the first time there's been this like official portrait challenge. Uh, so that's fun. I'm just adding some. I don't want to like uh, cage in the lips. Um, like there's such a soft edge. It's got this really defined, you know, between the top and bottom lip. Otherwise, it's really, um, it's really soft. So I'm just gonna kind of do some hatching here to show it's a bit darker. Looks a bit like stitches. Oh well. Um, just to kind of show some of that without um, kind of putting a heavy line down there. Oh, Henry, cool. I'm, I, I can't wait to see your portrait textures. That's cool. Um, and Sheila, now it smells like peonies. You were using poppies or poppies and peonies? Um, peonies or however you say it. That's cool. Graphite, clover. Graphite can be fun too. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you've all been doing, everyone who's drawing along. Um, oh, excellent. Um, Jess was working on the elderberry harvest this morning. Oh, yesterday I was thinking, should I make elderberry? ink for, for your guys' portraits, but maybe yours, maybe next week. It could be blueberry and elderberry. Um, but yeah, elderberry, elder pens, uh, my favorite. That's cool that you were just spending time with the elder this morning. So cool. Clive's working in pencil. That's great. Pencil is awesome too. Um,
Jess, are you drawing Spilly again? Because uh, I thought it was cool that you've, you've already worked from this reference. So everybody can um, check out Jess's uh, Instagram account to see a little more of her and Spilly. Um, so if you want to put it in the chat, then everyone can go and have a look. Yeah, and, I, and what was cool was these photos were taken by... Um, uh, I, I, I just check my notes here. But, um, yeah, f so these, these portraits, the photographs were um, taken at the request of a, a Baltimore musician, artist friend, Landis Expandus, who's been making home videos with green screens and homemade props during the pandemic in place of doing DJ gigs. Um, so that's really cool. Jess, do you know if your, if your portraits have been used in a, a green screen video yet? Because that would be pretty cool to, to check out. Ah, it wasn't poppies, it was peonies. That's that's fine. Ah, ha, ha, Hilda, yes I did. I mentioned last week that I might consider something of my handmade elder pens. I did. I have so many. Um, I have so many of these pens. I love them dearly, but I have so many. And I have some that I've made and never used. And once we've moved, um, so September time, I will I'll photograph a bunch of them and get them up. Um, you can write to me if you're interested in some elder pens. Um, I think it's wonderful if everyone makes their own pens, but I'm also happy to, to sell you mine. I have so many of them and so many of them that are so, such special branches, just some uh, really cool fun shapes and I have more of them than I can use so I would be happy to send them into the world where people can write poetry or draw portraits with them it would be wonderful to to have them out there so that's something I haven't forgotten I'll get on to that but yeah we're in the middle of moving and stuff so um, the time shall come Mm -hmm. oh, Clover asks where people are posting their pics. Um, that's a good question. If you use Instagram, you can hashtag Ink Naturally, tag me as well. Um, I follow the hashtag, but if I'm tagged in it, then I'll definitely see it soon and I will share your work. I love seeing um, what, what you've all done. Um, and otherwise it could be shared if you're in the sketchy art school. Um, I just made a post saying, hey, I'm going to be doing this. And um, maybe I could, I'll post mine in there, or you could just post it in the main class feed. That's probably the best idea. Post it in the sketchy art school class um, main feed, and, uh, and then people will see it. Um, but Instagram, I'm, I'm on Instagram regularly, so definitely share it there. Um, our time has nearly come to a close for today. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. So thank you very much, Jess and Spilly. Thank you everyone who's joined in. Uh, everyone who's been here and everyone who's going to watch after the fact. Um, it's, it's just great to be creating together. And anyone who would like to come draw with us live where we can have real-time conversations. Um, I host a, a two-hour um, portrait sketching session on Zoom, and the information is always on Instagram. And between 30 seconds and six minutes, we spend a lot of time drawing each other and lots of laughs, sharing stories, and it's a nice way to have some... Uh, yeah, social life with, with, with all of you people. Uh, 
if you're in lockdown, some places aren't, but whatever, uh, even if you are or are not, feel free to come along and uh, use whatever you like to draw with, and it's a lot of fun, fun drawing each other. Um, this was fun too. I like it. Uh, so it's it's uh, eight o'clock where I am. Um, so I will hang in here for a minute. If if anyone wants to ask any questions, um, then now is a good time to ask be, because I'm, I'll stop drawing. I think. And um, I'll just read through any questions you may have and um, answer, um, or come on Tuesday and uh, and draw with us, and we'll be able to talk about things. Oh, Clive is using swan feathers. I'm using both ends. That's so cool. Clive's drawing with swan feathers. Um, okay, Jess has been doing some herb work. While she's watching, that's great. Um, oh, and she just posted a link. Um, if it doesn't work in the chat, you can put it in the comments below. That would be cool. Uh, anything in relation to this, put it. Um, it takes a moment before these live streams become normal YouTube videos, but then you could post the link in the comments. Um, Jess, about the, your musician artist friend who's um, been making cool videos. Um, yeah, Eleanor, cool. I'm, I've also thought about the thing of selling pens. I, I think it would be cool to sell pen making kits as well, where I send some sticks, or you can use any sticks you've got, um, with one of my pens, and then you can see exactly how I've done it, and hopefully that would be a helpful way to, to kind of um, try and imitate the way that I've made the pens. And on the, Eleanor, you're doing the Ink Naturally class, there's a, there's a longer pen making video in there. I think it's a featured post where you can see the way I sharpen my knives. It's important to have a sharp knife. Um, and the way I kind of guide the knife as I cut the pen. So check that out. Um, yeah, it's, it's been lovely having you here, Clover. Uh, I've seen so much of your awesome work in the sketchy art school. It's nice having you here. Nice having all of you here. Thank you to all of you. Glad you like the portrait. Um, cool. And Dawn, yeah. You wrote to me, and I had registered that you wrote to me on Instagram. But yeah, there's a lot going on at the moment. But it shall come. Um, there will be pens, and there will be lots of drawing for everybody. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for being here. And I'm very much looking forward to see what you all create. And come back next week because we're going to draw Jess on the other side of this page. I've left space for Jess. Jeff and Spilly are very much in love. And we're going to draw them together on uh, one page. So that's why I've put Spilly over here. <gasps> He's a special guest coming to say goodbye. Hey, honey. Um, and... Yeah, so next week, maybe you made space with your drawing too on the other side of the page. Um, it's going to be a group portrait, Spilly and Jess, and that's going to be awesome. So have a wonderful week, and happy drawing, painting. Bye-bye.